Welcome to All Gen Gamers, a podcast for people in video games of all generations. Starring Pete Dore, Happy Console Gamer, Gamester81, and Jason Heine. Hey guys, what's going on? This is John at Gamester81, and welcome to episode 62 of the All Gen Gamers podcast. I'm one of your hosts. We have Jason Heine, the EMU Review. Jason, what's going on? What is up, guys? How are we doing? <laughs> We've got Johnny Millenni, Happy Console Gamer. Johnny, what's going on, man? Hi, boys. <laughs> and we got Pete Dore. Pete. Pikachu. <laughs> Pete sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Pikachu. Pikachu. Uh, we are joined by our special guest of this episode is my brother, Greg. We've talked to him uh, about him a number of times in, in All Gen Gamers and figured it'd be kind of fun to bring him on. Greg, how you doing? What up, Greg? What's going on, guys? He's also referred to as Gary sometimes, I guess. Uh, that Gary, I, the cat killer. I know, I think that was Greg. <laughs> All I knew was Gary. I don't know any Greg guy. Who's that? It's, it's funny for those of you who don't know, uh, was it two packs ago? And, and and Johnny and Greg kind of met for the first time, and I introduced him as, as as Greg. And I guess the whole time Johnny was calling Greg Gary. And Greg, and Greg... his name was Gary. And you guys are way too polite that you never told me that. You're like, you know, you know I'm saying, hey, Gary, how you doing? And you're both like looking at each other. What the fuck? <laughs> Nobody told me anything. Who said, hey, you know what? My brother's name is actually Greg. So hey, Gary, it is for life. It is, you know. That's the way it's, gonna... <laughs> it's close enough. I've been it's, called worse. Called, people always call me Justin, uh, so I feel your pain. Really, Justin? They call you Justin. A lot of people what? do. Yeah. Is that because you like, like when I first meet people, they're always like, "It was Justin, right?" And I'm like, "No, it's Jason." You kind of remind me of Justin Bieber a little bit. Oh, that's funny. That's, that's funny. We, we got a comedian here. I'm gonna turn his mic off. This is some bullshit. <laughs> so the, the exciting thing with Gary being here is that we get to hear the legendary fucking story about how he nearly killed a cat. I love this story. I, I think and we can that, hear exactly from you. Well, I, I think the story is best told by John, and then I can correct him because he likes to tell the tall tale, and then I can, I can correct his BS story. <laughs> well, I don't know the whole detail. I just know like snippets of it. So, so basically, uh, Greg was supposed to be taking care of our neighbor's cat, and uh, what happened was, I guess there was some kind of miscommunication between. I guess when they were going to be away. Miscommunication. <laughs> a miscommunication. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Greg. You can probably best describe yeah. it. So, so, yeah, my buddy, my buddy John from across the street, his family was heading away for a couple weeks on a family trip, and they said, "Hey, Greg, we'd like to have you take care of our cat for us." And I said, "Well, okay, it's fine." About a day or two before they left, their John's sister was actually going to be in town. And by the way, sister lives miles away and different house or whatever. And she agreed she was going to take care of the cat. Well, long story short, they get back. The cat was never fed, never taken care of. And, and I got the, the brunt of the experience and the cat was never the same. So <laughs> it, it survived though. It survived. But well, yeah. well, I, I don't understand this miscommunication. They're like, feed our cat. You're like, okay, I'm not feeding your cat. And then that doesn't happen. I, I totally, that's a bit I don't understand. That's like a mis mishearing or something. But, but, yeah. but it's like a dog. You don't need to feed the cat every day anyway. Why don't they just put out like a month worth of food and be fine? Well, right? because he'd eat it all in one day. Then you like starving for all the rest. Because that's what cats do. They're so fucking retarded. Yeah, and they throw, they throw it up. Don't yeah. cats self-regulate anyway? Can't you put like a whole bunch of cat food out and then they just... Yeah, that's what we used to do. Yeah. yeah. Stick yeah. a machine on its head that'll give him a pellet every day or something. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. this this story is great. I, I could spend hours on it. Actually, is that uh... <laughs> really? that's <some> crazy? <laughs> what, okay, what, okay, okay. Tell tell me the moment you're you're like you're having a great summer. The cat's nearly dead. When did you find out? Like when did you know that you nearly killed a cat? Like how did you how did you find this out? Well, I mean, the day after they got home. John came to me and was like, not John, my brother, yeah. but my buddy John. And he came to me and he said, so what's going on, man? Did you take care of the cat? There's no food. And it's like, you know, weak and can barely even move. So. Oh, shit. <laughs> can you imagine that conversation? Like, that's the worst conversation oh. you can have with, like, a neighbor or anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was, you know, I was pretty close with the family. and the, But the parents, I don't think the parents really looked at me the same way after that whole situation. So... Wasn't a very Did good you, deal. Well, they trusted you with their cat's life, and you failed them miserably. Yeah, yeah. yeah it sounded like it sounded to me though, like they kind of, the sister kind of 
agreed to do it and i guess somehow yeah. dropped the ball and great got yeah. the line, so well there was definitely some miscommunication like we said there's some miscommunication there but you know i don't like cats but i'm not out to kill the cat so <laughs> well, I, we don't I mean they're, about they're, that. Pretty, they're pretty worthless know. but <laughs> <laughs> well it comes out it comes kill out the cat and he owns he's a, cat. a racist he's, yeah, we, have, we, have a, we have a cat it, it tries to kill me every morning when i'm trying to when i just wake up it tries Shit. to trip me down the stairs every morning so i think it's there's some car, there's some cat karma going on or something i don't know it looks at like you well, it's like i know what you, i know what you did <laughs> yeah seriously yeah that's good stuff people say animals know you know they're aware yeah. of their surroundings <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> How was that? Very angry cat. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Nice. Hey, well, speaking of animals, you guys, I have an update. You know, as we heard last episode, you know, the whale was uh, making a cameo uh, in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And John yeah. wasn't here to hear the end with me. Oh, and John yeah. And John. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. Uh, uh, I, you know, I sent out, you know, some PMs and out some emails. He did send over um, some audio clips here of uh, some of his work. Uh, that he has done for the Star Wars film. Oh, yes. Yeah, so uh, you guys want to hear him? Sure. Greg doesn't know who the whale so, so is. Again, so, Jason, from from a Star Wars film, you said, right? Yeah, yeah, from the, uh, A New Hope. Episode yeah. 4. Episode 4. Yeah, episode episode four. 4. Yeah. That's one for one. It's amazing. That's the scene when Obi-Wan Kenobi is fighting Luke, right? Correct. Or no, Lucas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's down, coming. To, yeah, down he's coming in down. that uh, little the sand, ravine, sand yeah. people are like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they get scared off. So I mean, like, listen to that. I mean, he he did a pretty good job there. It's one for one with what was there originally. <laughs> I think it's better. <laughs> God, that scares me with the sand people, doesn't it? <laughs> that scares the <laughs> shit out of them. They're, they're, they're out of everybody. Here. Oh my god! So good for him. It's so much, and it's better. You know what? The one thing I like about that, it's better than the original. Way better. <laughs> yeah. I agree. It gives agree. me chills every time I hear it. At least they didn't add it during like when Darth Vader said no. They didn't add the whole voice and <laughs> <from> like. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one I think he can do. We gotta <laughs> look into that. We'll see. So, give him a call, Greg. I want to talk to you about uh, kind of reminiscing about playing classic like PC games growing up. Uh, mm -hmm. I know we used to play the Gateway Computer. I just want to kind of get your your, your memories of, of what games uh, you were fond of playing growing up. You test my memory. But uh, <laughs> I would say certainly, you know, the King's Quest, Space Quest series. Yeah, Apple II. Right? Yeah. Those were, those were big time. Um, those are the main ones I can think of. In fact, I was playing, I was playing a game recently that's a, a new game that's kind of throwback to that old style um called gemini rue i'm not sure if you guys have heard that game before but, it's on the uh, PC, say? Yeah. yeah it's on the pc yeah but it's got like all that similar graphics like the old crappy pixelated graphics but the story is really great it's probably five six seven hours of gameplay um if you know what you're doing, if you, you have to figure it out yourself, it's probably three times as long because you have to find that one super pixelated thing on the screen, right? Um, but yeah, um, those types of games were my favorite, you know, back in the day. Um, how about you, John? Yeah, I mean, I love those uh, Space Quest, King's Quest, uh, X Wing versus Tie Fighter, X Wing, yeah, all those yep, classic Lucas Arts games uh, were just were just really Wing awesome. Wing Commander, Wing, Wing Commander, Commander. Oh, yeah, yeah, Wing yeah. Commander was yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Remember Rex, I a, Re go ahead, Greg, Johnny. I got, a, I got a question for you guys because your brothers growing up. Did you ever get into any fights over who would play what system? <laughs> like who would? I, this is what I want to hear about. Not really. I don't think so. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I remember. I remember like Matt, Whitney, John, Greg's friend would always come over, and like I had a friend that they would always kind of go bump bump heads playing Mario Kart. You know. Yeah. But yeah. No, nothing really like. You know, we, we got along pretty well growing up. So definitely like the X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. Those games are yeah. classic. Um, what was the Day of the Tentacle? I love those games. Oh, my goodness. I love those games. Day of the Tentacle. Yeah, totally. Yeah. The, this, I mean, that's really the, a, lot, a lot of the, what you could do back then was like the point click, you know, and then, you know, you, if you forget to grab something and then you're like, what in the world? So you have to figure out what, you know, you almost have to use the the uh, 
the cheats or whatever. Back then it wasn't online, right? But yeah. you had to figure out what it was. Yeah, because those games are always so trial and error. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like you yeah. couldn't. Yeah, there was no online fact, right? No. You can't, <laughs> can't like get on and search it out and and those are like you had passwords and stuff to actually oh, load yeah. the game into your computer and stuff like yeah. that and, and install it and it was like you know you had those keys you had to turn the thing and, oh geez you know <laughs> oh man some of those older games like um like blackthorn i have for pc you guys know blackthorn mm-hmm. you know that's inter- is that that side scroller it's an interplay game yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah. i have it on 32x yeah. yeah yeah um i have that on m- multiple platforms but I know on PC to install it, you know, you have to have the manual and it's not like they gave you a CD key in those days. It was mm. like, turn to page 50 yeah. and what is word four in line three? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like you had yeah. to like read it like, Oh, the word is, you know, nib or noob or you yeah. know, something. You, know, you had to put that, right. up, you know, Pin the ass. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah, I'm I like, remember- fuck, I don't have the manual anymore. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, I remember when, uh, so before we had a PC, a buddy of mine had like a 286.16 PC and Wing Commander and had to uninstall a bunch of stuff before they could install the game. And it was like an hour and a half just to install the game. Um, And then after we installed it, we'd be able to play for a little while, but then his dad needed the computer back for the regular stuff. So we had to uninstall it and put all the other stuff back on again. It was a big ordeal. So we had to do it over the weekend. But I remember playing that game for the first time and I was like, wow this is really cool stuff and now you like what you you know you look at it now and you're like what what was i thinking back then but you know yeah. i guess it's just what you had to compare it to right yeah and the technology was new at the time you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's like yeah it's crazy and i know all those were on like big ass floppy disks you know yeah, yeah, i know exactly. you had like yeah. 20 of them yeah, <laughs> yeah totally totally was, yeah oh, the wing commander time. series is awesome yeah. definitely greg had a great screen name wasn't it catnip <laughs> remember that yeah I think it was because he played the karate like the cats you yeah. know his yeah. catnip that's awesome <laughs> yeah. yeah kind of fitting with that's right you cats. could pick in that game right you could pick and choose <laughs> that's why he liked yeah. it so much because he was killing cats all yeah time. i was a, i was a cat killer back then too, so. <laughs> starting him early <laughs> oh, exactly good, good. Yeah, good times. remember uh rex nebular greg i do remember that that was kind of weird wasn't it like where the it was kind of a point and click wasn't it kind of i, I forget but yeah, wasn't, you, like he goes to a planet like, with a whole bunch like of women. You like land or... on some Amazon planet, yeah. and it's you and a bunch of ladies, right? That are like all all after you or something like that. It's some like weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was totally the same same ordeal, right? The yeah. point and click, point and click, yeah, adventure type thing that you know could if you knew exactly what you need to do, probably only took three hours to beat. But because it was such a you know crazy trying to find if you needed to look at something or grab something or kick it or speak to it, that it took you like. You know, 20 hours plus to, to even <laughs> get it through half of it so yeah i had a lot of good memories going to my grandfather's or grandfather's place and playing the oh, Com- yeah. commodore 64 dig dug dig dug yeah california games yeah what are uh, some of the games that we had on there uh was that? i think california games is the one we played the most i'm trying to think of the human one. race yeah that's Freaking right that was hacky just, sack <laughs> monsters yeah, yeah. That was there great. was only a few but that was i remember going to the Triangle Mall and, you know, looking for new Commodore 64 games when we were out there and seeing what was new. But there's only a couple, three games that he had, but it was enough to keep us entertained while we were out there, right? Yeah, yeah. So I have a few questions then, since, like, we have the (laughs) brothers here. So, now, what did your parents think? I mean, because I I know John, you know, this guy is crazy. You know, he's a a gamer like crazy. He's got all all these consoles. The guy's nuts. (laughs) <laughs> we didn't have that many back then though right right yeah well i can't imagine you if you did you're even more fucked than i thought you are now <laughs> so so no but i mean i'm just saying just thinking back in general right john we didn't mm-hmm. have well i guess i'm just trying to think you did have quite a few handhelds and stuff but think about so, the consoles yeah. we had we had we had the nes we had the super nintendo obviously we got that coleco vision th- was our first one that really i remember playing. yeah the coleco so before that yeah coleco and we had the we had the sega yeah, we had Genesis, yeah. The Genesis? Because mm-hmm. I don't I don't remember playing the Genesis very much. I think was that one where we played the the Road Rash or Road Over it was? Yeah, Road that, Rash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Played, we, picked, we got that I remember getting it at uh with mom at like some kind of uh, outlet store, KB mm-hmm. outlet store, and we got it pretty cheap with Sonic and a whole bunch of games, but mm-hmm. we didn't pick up the Genesis right away. You know. Our neighbor behind us, the Finleys, they had like a Sega Master System. I remember that playing that mm-hmm. behind us. I don't remember playing the, the Sega Genesis very much, to be honest with you. We we're mainly Super was, Nintendo. Yeah, I was mainly Super Nintendo, and then um, you know playing the PC games and stuff like that when I. Yeah, Greg. Greg was the one that really got me into like Final Fantasy two and Final Fantasy three and all those classic Square 
Squaresoft games. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, Greg, I mean, you're are you a pretty hardcore gamer today? Do you play a lot of games and or do you... um, not as much? I mean, I I played a lot through you know obviously younger years and then through high school and then into college, um, and then after college, I took a break from. Well, I guess I should say I got into like EverQuest, and then that was just like zoned in on that one game for a couple of years, and then I just <laughs> couple years, totally, that's all. yeah easy to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Totally lost a couple of years of my life there. <laughs> and then uh, then I took like a, a break. Like, I don't think I played anything for quite some time. Like I totally missed the whole like PlayStation, almost most of the PlayStation 2 and Xbox era. I never played any games on those systems, really. Uh, maybe except for some Madden stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, but then now I, I try to get some time in now, but I don't have nearly as much time as I'd like to. So but I, it's a mix of, of PC and console stuff. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. But yeah, I try to get a few hours in a week, but that's about it right now for me, unfortunately. What are you playing right now on the PC? And what were you playing before when I was up there? You were playing it. Uh, what was I playing out here before? Um, Deus Ex, I got that right. So I've got that. And um, I, the Gemini Rue game I was telling you about before. Mm-hmm. There was a throwback game. I actually just finished that. It's a pretty cool game. Um, Dragon Age 2, I finished it once and I was wanted to play through it again. Um, Try to think what else on the PC. I pre- if, it, if it's on the console and PC, I prefer it on the PC. But, um, but yeah, I mean, those, I mean, I, I'm playing a lot of console stuff right now too. I'm, Gears of War three, and I'm looking forward to the Arkham Asylum, or sorry, the the uh, Batman game coming out. So there's a lot of good console stuff that's coming out too. That I'm looking forward to. Huge... It sounds like you still play a lot of games, though. Actually, yeah, it does. <laughs> He's yeah, a gamer. I don't don't fool you. He's a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I, I, I try to pepper it in now and again, but yeah. so yeah. How you like Gears of War three? You like it? Oh, it was great. I just I just beat it. Um, and you know, funny thing is I'm not really, not, I don't play online very much at all for any games. And I think by accident, I just hit a button and I went into some like multiplayer mode or whatever. And I was like sucked into that for like an hour and a half. And like, oh. I thought it was really cool. And it was free cause I don't have the Xbox live gold or whatever, but apparently, you know, public play is free online. So I got sucked in playing that for about an hour and a half the other day. It's actually really fun. So yeah, it's a great game. I love that game. I just, yeah. I just said I finished it's it really cool. uh, a week and a half ago, and uh, it's all about online now. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I, I, I really love those. The my preference is those those third person cover shooter type games like that. Mm-hmm. Those are my favorite types. Yeah, I really I'm looking forward to doing the horde. Like uh, one of my friends finished it at work. I'm like, how was it? He goes, it was fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's supposed to be pretty wild uh, stuff. So I haven't really even started that up yet as much as I'd like to. But mm-hmm. so yeah, that's what I'm gonna probably be doing. Trying to do this week a little bit more. But I had, I had so I got to tell you guys something. Something crazy happened over the weekend. Okay. Something absolutely. I still probably because really, I, I, I want to hear your stories, and I'm sure it's going to evoke some stories. Is that and Pete? Pete's really going to love this story. Oh boy! I um <laughs> I, I I the craziest thing happened. I had um a major meltdown. Like I just I I lost my mind for uh, like you know a good like five to ten minutes. And um, guess what game I was playing, Pete? Pure Solar. No. No. <laughs> Eco. Eco. Not eco. Did it just come out this week? It's the uh, it was the other w- the game on the disc. What Shadow of the Colossus? Yeah, Pete, why don't you do me a favor? No, actually, yeah. Wait, for, wait for the story, then I'll say go check in my uh, the picture I put up on Facebook of this. But <laughs> now this this is a, this this is a funny story story because it's it's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed about it. I mean, the reason why is that I got angry over something that was so I don't know. To be honest, trivial, but okay. I do have a history with Shadow of the Colossus. Is I, I, I think I got in the in the PS2 version. I got to the third Colossus, where so I started playing this one, the high def, uh, you know, update, and uh, it looks really nice. It's everything I expected it to be, and I get so I get to the first Colossus, and I'm like, okay, cool, like, well, 
So I'm sitting there with Kim the first night and um, I'm trying to climb the Colossus and, you know, and, and I know how to play the game. I know how to play the game. But I'm just having the worst luck getting up on top of, you know, getting to his head. I'm almost there. The, I don't the controls are it. intimidating. Yeah, they're not the easiest out there. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get into all this. <laughs> don't, worry, <laughs> don't worry about a damn thing. Is that, um, so the first night I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm fucking tired because I'm losing my mind here. This is pissing me off. I'm like, no more, no more tonight. I'm like, uh, I'll do this like tomorrow or next week, this week or sometime. So, uh, so, uh, anyways, uh, the next day I, 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 I turn it on again at night. And Kim said with me, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it this time. I said, I've, I finished this before. I said, this is not hard. I remember it being easy, in fact. I don't know why I'm having such a struggle with it. And I started climbing up with the Colossus and, you know, I'm stabbing it so it falls the first time. And it's start hopping from level to level. And I'm doing pretty good in my first time. I'm like, oh, I'm almost there. I get to the head. I start stabbing the head. I'm like, fucking awesome. And then I fall off. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not. And that's what's funny about this. So many people will be listening to this going, the first Colossus is so easy. I don't know what you promised. You suck. You suck. Well, you know what? It's not about sucking. <laughs> I just, I couldn't do it. And I, the controls were infuriating me. I mean, they were taking me into a place where I, um, I, I, I hate to be as a gamer. I just, I just started to get really hot and frustrated. Like really, I'm just sitting there. Are you more mad at that situation or like with GameStop in the past? You know what? It's on par. That's, wow. that's fucked up. Wow. Yeah. But I remember when I, said, when I went for Rob's uh, pre-order and they didn't fuck. they said, oh, sorry. You know, we fucking gave it away. I fucking, I got that hot. Yeah. I was that mad. But I just started building up. And I think, because I, I almost got to the top of it. You know, I did, sorry, I did get to the top and fell off. I'm trying to get back up there again. And I'm having the worst luck in the universe. And I just keep on trying and I keep on going and I keep on going. And I don't know what point it was. I don't know what it was. And I, I haven't done this in years. I just grab my PS3 controller and I just use it as an axe and I start smashing it into the ground. Just smashing it. <laughs> as hard as I fucking could. And the thing just, it was on the second hit, it fucking broke. It is cracked open. And I'm just, and the funny thing is Kim's reaction. <laughs> there's this guy and what was funny about it uh, Pete is I had the I was so losing my mind I had the controller over my head going come on get up there get I'm like pushing the controller up in the air thinking that he was making the character go further because I was so into the moment but she said I'm doing that then all of a sudden I just fucking just start going like a like a madman <laughs> like a crazy man I just said oh my god what are you doing I'm oh, fucking doing <laughs> <laughs> fucking colossus shit and fucking crap controlling and i fucking I'm, I'm, i have something to admit though i smash it i smash one of my favorite ps3 controllers and it felt fucking good <laughs> I, mean, I mean i still feel a, a level of satisfaction from smashing that controller that i i i, I don't know it, it almost top sex for me it really did it just I felt so good <laughs> unleashing my anger. And somebody said at work today, oh, well, you must have felt embarrassed afterwards. And it's like, no, I feel embarrassed. I couldn't fucking be the first Colossus. That's what I feel embarrassed about. But smashing the controller felt good. You know, I have no qualms about that. I would do that all over again. I was just one of those moments. I haven't done that since I was a kid. And I throw the controller at the screen. Well, I went with the screen at the sideboard or whatever. But, um. I just had a, I had a, I had a fucking craze moment. I just lost yeah. my mind. And that's what I thought would be great to hear from you guys. I know Pete's, you know, the, the guru, a Buddha gamer, you know, yin and yang, you know, <laughs> it just didn't, nothing affects him. But if any of you guys ever had like a real like raging moment, I, I had mine. I had mine on the weekend. Pete, go check out my Facebook for that picture. Where, where am I, I finding this picture? It's on my, it's on my Facebook, um, on my main wall. It's, uh, let see. Yeah, I think we all get it, in the moments where we're playing a game, we get frustrated. But it's better to take it off, oh. on, take your anger out on the controller than on Kim, right? So, well, yeah, well, that was going to come next. It's just to start beating her, just start slapping. Start start slapping. slapping. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? Actually, like in Facebook, I think 184 people like the picture. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> and I think, I think what makes it a, 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 you know, everybody can relate to that, you know. 
And I think everybody can relate to that feeling of getting angry and smashing things and all that. And it's like funny because people always ask us that question. They're like, have you ever gotten angry and smashed a controller? Well, that answer's yours. Because I think, I think prior to then, none of us ever said we did. So that you've broken the, the ice there, Johnny. Yeah, no pun intended. I remember back in the yeah. day, Greg used to get kind of pissed playing games. I can't recall any specific games, but... Did he kill any cats over it? Yeah, I, I used to throw controllers at cats, too, so I... <laughs> <keep coming. laughs> no, I, I remember distinctly, uh, I mean, uh, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, man. I, that thing caused me to throw the controller yeah. many a time. Yeah. I remember throwing it and it hit, like, we had a... <laughs> We got like banana all over the controller because yeah. yeah. I threw the controller and hit a banana and yeah. like a banana gunk in it and stuff. It's exploded. In fact, I still have some of my Nintendo games still have banana gunk on it, kind of like Pete's controller. Barf controller. <laughs> like barf. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you missed the story where <laughs> Pete like had a buddy who like threw up in one of his controllers and some of that barf went into the controller and he still has it. It's like wow. one of those see through controller too, the gross. Good times. Wow. Yeah. Figures, right? <laughs> see through uh, controller. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I do have in fact I have a I have that controller still that has little chunks of banana, dried banana wow. on it. Wow. It's funny. And Trojan, I remember playing the game Trojan oh, by Capcom. That game is that so game. fucking hard. Yo, and, that game was uh, insane. That and Golden Ghosts. Oh Jesus. That game pisses me That's- off. You know, just hearing you know the, the name, it's so hard. You beat the game, and then you have to get some fucking piece or whatever. And you got to go back and do it again. Yeah. yeah. And if you die, it's over. Like game over, no continues or whatever. <laughs> yeah. or one continue. I don't know what it is. Yeah. God, that game is mad. Ghost, Ghost and Goblins. I remember that game too. Yeah. That was, yeah. Super hard. I remember pausing. I remember pausing that game. We had to go to church on Sunday or something like that. We're playing early in the morning. I pause the game, and I get back, and the game's all jacked up when I get back. And of course, I'm like really far when I paused it. And man, it was one of those controller throwing moments in life too. <laughs> I can see just coming in there. Oh, I can't wait to get back. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. there's no safe safe slots. Is all. Ironically, yeah. ironically, after coming back from church, right? What the fuck? <laughs> exactly. Fuck you! <laughs> just That's kicking funny. stuff over. Just but, but the, that, in one ear out the other. About this. Isn't it funny? Like you guys are talking about ghouls and ghosts and stuff like that. That's funny. Those games I'm really pretty good at. And um, everybody, you know, is good at a game. Some people are like, just can't catch on. Shadow of the Colossus, I just, I just can't get with the game. I just can't get with the control. The control is so unusual. Beautiful looking game. Yeah. Presentation, fantastic. Yeah, how's the HD? Is it pretty sweet? Is it's it beautiful. worth getting? Yeah. Is it worth getting right. for the updated like HD and all that, or is it? No, it, it looks great. Okay. It looks how it's supposed. It was always supposed to look really. Yeah. But um, I like Shadow of the Colossus, and I think a lot of people will, you know. Is it a classic? Yes. You know, the control is frustrating as fuck. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think I don't think you can escape that. I think people are scared to say that about the Shadow of the Colossus. They're like, oh no, it's, don't dare talk so bad about it. And it's like, no, I'm not talking bad about it. I just suck at the game. At least I can admit that. I you know, when I, I when I started playing it again, like it took me. The controls are they're crazy. Like I, <laughs> I had some problems with the first Colossus as well. Like it's it's pretty easy when it comes down to it. Once you get the controls, you know, you can mm. finish it in like forty five seconds a minute. But man, it took me a while to get used to the controls again, too. And there were times where I was getting a little frustrated with it, especially, you know, I'm not sure if I want the controls inverted, whatnot, but it's not the easiest thing by any means. And uh, especially with a game like that, where, you know, <laughs> you fall off the Colossus and it's like it's a five minute trek back up on that thing to get back oh to where my. you were. <laughs> oh, my God. So, And what's horrible is I, I thought to myself, oh, well, you know, Brian at Game Deals, he... He's, he's got a bunch of PS3 uh, controllers. I'll just go and get uh, another red one. And so I went down and he's like, no, I don't have any red ones. So I'm like, what? Like, that's my favorite one. <laughs> so I'll go, I'll go hunting for it. And you know what? It was a $40 controller I smashed. And wow. You know, you know what's more frustrating than anything is I had it in the other room. I took that photo and then I'm pe- trying to piece it back together and it activates. It starts up my PS3 in the other room. But, you know, I, there's nothing I, I, I can, I could probably fix it. I, I, I don't want to though. I want that control always smashed. I want to frame it or something. <laughs> Hang it. Hang it up yeah. from the ceiling. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shadow of rage. I don't know what I'd call it, but that, that that was funny though. That was a funny it's sometimes fun to be angry. And I really enjoyed being angry. That was fucking pissed. <laughs> I was <laughs> oh I, I actually I, I actually have a story about smashing controllers. I I tend to hold back. I watched my older brother, CJ. He used to 
he was a guy who would i watched him play through all the mega mans and zelda and like at the time i was kind of just like watching he would never let me play um in those days but he would get so upset and smash him himself and i would just watch and just be like oh shit you know like there goes another controller you know it's messed mm. up but what what we would do later on is like i would have friends come over like in super nintendo nintendo 64 days we're talking you know mid 90s here early 90s and i would have friends who had anger problems and would smash him like all the time and i was yeah. like man they can't be screwing around with my nice controllers you know like i was like collecting at the time you know i was conscious of you know this is kind of like i want to keep this nice if possible so i went to like target or whatever and i just bought like three or four of the off brand like you know you know what i mean the cheapy ones and every time they would come over i'd always stick them with those ones the mad cats the mad cats yeah yeah, yeah just the and i hated those ones yeah the, pete yeah. i know you love you said you have one for 64 that has barf in it that you love it mm-hmm. but i've i've never been a fan of really any third party controllers they always just piss me off they're always yeah. something's fucked up with them but so i would always give them to my friends who would throw them and i'd be like ha, no big deal no big deal <laughs> That's so, so it was all good that's how i got around it <laughs> yeah those are always good to give to friends because when you're playing versus right they're not used to that controller so yeah they can't hand, get you, to the buttons anyway right them, yeah <laughs> you hand them the jacked up controllers the crazy sizes and stuff and give yourself a little bit of advantage yeah i don't know what i don't know what the third parties are thinking like they always seem to make them a lot bigger, yeah. don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, really? I, I don't think that's a good idea. If we learned anything from the original Xbox yeah, controller, the N sixty four one is way out. Like the one Pete likes, with you know the Mad Cats one is stupid. It's like yeah, the, I don't want to say it to him, but yeah, I hate that one. Pete, it sucks. <laughs> well, there's many different Mad Cats ones, probably. <laughs> Pete, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You're, Pete, Pete, you're all right. They're, they made yeah, like they're, they're like at least three or four different types. What's the one you have? The small one, that, the Nintendo 64 one. That's kind of cool. The Hori, uh, yeah, the amazing. Hori Mini Pad. The Hori Mini Pad. That's yeah. an excellent one. Yeah. That's I don't funny. know for you though. Does it fit? I know my hands are so big. It might not fit. My... Okay. That's... <laughs> hey Johnny, I have a nickname for you. We're gonna call you the Colossus. <laughs> I like that because <laughs> you smash it. <laughs> well, you need you need a better. Come on, you're a witty guy. Let's Happy controller colossus. Yeah, no, they're too long. Something short and witty. She's I can that. handle that. Angry console gamer. <laughs> I can handle that. I so, speaking of anger, John, are you picking up Dark Souls tomorrow? Since you're such in love with these easy games, <laughs> I've heard this game is so ridiculously, ridiculously hard. So I can't yeah. wait. So, I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait. Yeah, no, that's that's a, that's just like yeah. I, I, I was watching actually a review on television about it tonight. We have this thing called Electric Playground in Vancouver. I do reviews on video games and stuff like that, and this said it's very punishing. Mm. <laughs> so that's kind of in the review. They kept saying it's punishing. You know? Did you play the original one? Did you play the Demon I, Souls? I, I did a little bit. Everybody kept recommending that to me. Everybody kept writing to me saying you got to play this game and. I was really reluctant to play it, and I played it for a little bit, and I thought, you know what? This is cool, but it's not my thing. It's mm. totally not my thing at all. But did you finish it? Yo, Greg? What's that? Did you finish it? Oh, the Demon Souls? No, I, I have it. I, I played it for like a couple hours, and I was like, what in the world, man? I'm dying to send you back like 15 minutes back or whatever, and it's like... So it's it's a pretty it's a really tough game, but I only played it for a couple hours. I get frustrated with those types of games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, me, me and Peter have talked. I, I enjoy easy games these days. I really like I like having um, a good time playing a video game. I I did all the challenging games when I was younger. I I don't have time for them anymore. They just frustrate me now. You need to just uh, sit back. You need to have your tea. You need to just chill the fuck out. I just finished my tea. And I know you <laughs> now I'm did. angry again. <laughs> no. Kim, get him some more goddamn tea. Oh, no, she's hiding in the other room playing Dragon Quest Eight. <laughs> she's How is she up to now in that? She's like 20 hours in or something, stupid thing like that. Um, what's funny about that is that it's actually the other night, I've kind of, I kind of figured out what I was getting. Rob's probably going to hear us, but I'm not going to say what it is. I figured out what I was going to get Rob for uh, the Christmas special that we do every year for the show. And I came out and I was telling Kim, I said, hey, I know what I'm going to get Rob, blah, 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 blah. And she's so engrossed in Dragon Quest. She's like, oh, okay. And she's so back to and I, no, 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 listen. Like, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, okay, cool. And I'm like, wait, are you, are you even listening to me? Yeah, yeah. 
And she just like, to- like glances at me like for like two seconds. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, and it's so funny. I had a flashback to when I was younger and I'd be dating all these women and they'd come over and, um, you know, I'd spend so much time playing video games and they'd be jumping in front of me going, Hey, you know, in front of the TV going, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. I remember that kind of few times. It was funny. And I'm like, Oh my God. Now I know how they feel, how they felt. <laughs> I totally know how they felt. It's the funniest feeling that is that when somebody's so engrossed in the game, they're like not paying attention at all. They don't give a fuck what you have to say. They're like so involved in their own world. They're, so that, that's been kind of funny lately. I like just walk out of the room and <laughs> no reaction. When the, the roles are, are reversed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's, that's a totally what it is. The roles are reversed. And I'm like, this is quite funny, actually. But the great thing is, is I can just sit down and I, I loved, I've, the more and more I watch Dragon Quest Eight play, the more I realize it's like one of my favorite RPGs of all time. I, I'm just so, I just so love the game. I just sit there and I just watch it. I was just sitting watching it for a couple of hours yesterday. And I finished the fucking game. You know, but it's still that good. It still holds up that well. And kind of, it's kind of weird seeing Dragon Quest Ten. It doesn't hold up as, you know, from the screenshots I've seen. It doesn't look as good as uh, Eight so far. But time will tell. Time will tell. But what have you guys been playing? Anything? Go ahead. Start. If you talked about what you've been playing, you start. Go for it. Oh, that's really it. I I I have been playing Shadow of the Colossus. I've been smashing it. <laughs> you know, um, a bit of Gears of War, um, a little bit online to that, but uh, other than that, not too much. That's about it. What, what about yourself, John? I uh, I'm gonna surprise you guys. I've been playing some RPG games actually. Um, I was playing on the flight. I was playing uh, Final Fantasy One on my iPad, not iPad, my iTouch, whatever iPod Touch. And it's a good game, classic game. I, I remember playing it for the NES, but this is obviously updated graphics and stuff, so. About five or six hours into that, it's good. Um, but very, very, uh, very challenging, kind of, you know. But yeah, I was also playing Pure Solar a little bit too. I popped that in, played that for a bit. Did you beat that boss? Um, no, not yet. <laughs> I need to do <laughs> more grinding. Boss. I need to do more fighting in it. And, and yeah, that game up. requires a lot of grinding. I and need to get back just, to that it's too. It's super man. hard. I mean, the music's great and the graphics are great. It's a great Genesis game, it really is. But uh, is it still hard to find? I would imagine, yeah. I mean, the first print for sure. I haven't checked to see if they've done any more printings, but yeah, it's still sought after. Yeah, I know it's 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 cool. It's a good game. It's a good game, but yeah, it's it's really hard. It's just it's a very uh, challenging game. It's not easy. How far into it are you? It's actually been quite a while since I've played it. Um, exact point in the game, I don't remember, but I'm about eight hours in, I think. Okay, cool. How many how many hours does it take to beat the game? I haven't really looked because be quite honest i try and avoid any kind of spoilers for the game so i yeah. don't really venture into the forums okay. for it or any walkthroughs yeah. or anything yeah. except for that one time i got stuck like holy shit that was fu- <laughs> oh, i had to check a fact for that yeah. um still playing batman arc asylum trying to get through that before uh, the new one comes out arkham city i'm really excited for that release can't wait um, this is your first this is your first time through uh arkham asylum it is yeah, yeah. what do you think so far it's good it's really fun. It's a good. I mean, I've noticed a lot of it. You're kind of you're stuck in the spy glass, whatever. You're you know, the detective yeah. scene through most of it. It seems like yeah. I've always had that on. You know, <laughs> which yeah. Kinda, a lot of people say they just leave it on the whole game. Yeah, and it gets confusing because <laughs> you see people through walls and these skeleton guys, and like you don't know if they're like in another room or you know. It, it, That's it, my number one complaint with the game is yeah. that it almost encourages you to keep that vision on the yeah. entire time. There's no yeah. advantage to keeping it off, and the things right. the graphics look amazing without that shit. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. And you know, the voice acting is really amazing too. I mean, Joker, Mark Hamill uh, does a great job uh, doing Joker and just the, I think it's just really good, well put, put together game. So I'm excited for that. Are you guys pick up the new one? I will. I don't know if it'll be day one. It's going to depend how addicted I am into Dark Souls. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Been playing uh, Mortal Kombat, the new Mortal, Com- Mortal Kombat on the PS3. Uh, play a Scorpion mostly, but uh, Sub Zero is good. And, I like um, what's his name too? Uh, the guy from God, Gears God of War, uh, uh, Kratos. He's he's a good character to play too. Uh, mm-hmm. Fun. The online on the game is kind of jacked up though. It's kind of laggy. I don't know. Wait, which are you talking about? Mortal Kombat, the newer one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I guess you can play as uh, Freddy Krueger too. There's a you can download Freddy Krueger and stuff on it. I haven't done that on the internet yet. So uh, the last game, well, a couple other games. Um, been playing. I picked up. Uh, well. 
I had it for a while. I, I beat, I was like 95% done with this game back in the day. And it was on the PS2 and then save card like fucked up on me and lost all my save slate. Yeah, it sucks. was Kingdom Hearts 2. So I'm oh, trying, I'm trying to get through that game. It's a great game. I really like it. Uh, they talk about great voice acting in that game. Amazing. Have you guys beaten that? I finished the first game and then I thought that was it for me. I, the, I was done. With the Kingdom second Hearts. one, the controls are so much better than the, than the second one. John, you should mm. try it. Yeah, it's, it's a really good game. It's a really good mm. game. Greg, have you, I, mean, I know you borrowed it from me. Have you played it much of it? or? I, I only played a couple of hours of it. That was, remember I said the, the PS2. Well, that was PS2? Yeah, PS2. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I think I bought a PS2 like after the PS3 came out. That's how far behind I was, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I didn't play much games up until yeah. recently, so. Yeah. So. Uh, other than that, that's kind of been what I've been playing. Uh, Donkey Kong Arcade quite a bit still playing that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, pass the baton to Jason. Well, Uh-oh. well, 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 whale, whale, whale. What do we have here? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know me guys, I've been playing a, just a shitload of battlefield three beta, just a shitload of it. Um, I've, I don't know. I probably put in 15, 20 hours maybe since it came out. Wow. Um, I'm rank 31. I'm just just ripping through it. Absolutely love it. I think it's going to be such a fantastic game. Wait, you ranked 31 out of how many? A 50. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, working my way through the classes, <clears throat> and the thing is, is once the game comes out, you know, all of the all of the stuff you do in the game isn't saved. Same thing with the alpha uh, when they release that; it doesn't save it, which is fine. I mean, by the time the game comes out, I will have already done this twice. <laughs> but it's it's really is is really nice how they how they do it, how they unlock the guns and the scopes and the attachments and um, everything else that goes along with it. So I'm, I'm really happy with um, the beta. I'm really happy with how um, it's panning out. I know that this is um, new technology. I know that uh, this beta is very glitchy, very buggy, has lots of issues, of course. Any any game in beta form does. And um, if... And if I'm finding myself blown away by the beta, which I am, I can only imagine that this game is going to be something to go down in history, at least in in my my world. Mm. But I think for the shooter genre, I really do, you guys. I think this is going to be uh, this is definitely going to be a game you don't want to pass up. Uh, if you if you're ever thinking about you know being borderline on getting involved with shooters, uh, I think the whole shooter genre has received bad rep in the last two to three years. Um, you know, I'm not going to name any names of why that is. Activision. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I think they're all great games, and I think this is definitely um, a play style that I prefer for sure. So um, I'm playing but, a shitload hey, of Jason, that. Jason, I got a question about it then. Um, being somebody like, for myself, I'm not that hardcore into, like, first-person shooters. Like, for me, why should I visit this game? And I'm asking... This is your chance to sell the game to me. I'm like, I'm kind of curious. I think, I think what this is, what this game is doing, uh, that other shooters aren't doing, is that they are actually putting you in the shoes of the soldier. You are actually going to be on the front lines. The audio, the visual effects, the atmosphere, the environment, your surroundings, the weapons, the play mechanics. The list goes on, guys. It's so phenomenal. Frostbite 2 engine is so phenomenal that you just cannot help but feel that you really are there on the battlefield. Here's here's another thing, though, that is really going to either make or break this. And I'm going to say this to everyone out there listening, not just to you or anyone else here, John and, and Pete. You guys, look, you have to be able to play with your friends. You have to be able to play with buddies, either on your friends list or friends in real life, you have to squat up. You have to do that. If you go online and play by yourself, I I can guarantee you, you will not get the same experience as if you do with your buddies and your friends. Okay, so you kind of have to know what's going on in the battlefield because this isn't a run and gun, okay? This isn't just run around and shoot and kill people and then the round ends. You have objectives. You have things to do. This is a kind of a grown-up shooter, you guys. This is a, a grown-up environment. This is something to where you actually have to think. You have to use your brain and actually make decisions that affect the whole piece of the pie here. Mm. So if you want to jump into that realm, 
and get away from a running gun or get away from, you know, um, an arena shooter. And I'm not hating on any of those, believe me. I mean, I mean, I, I love Call of Duty. I love uh, Unreal. I love Quake. I love Serious Sam. I love all these, you know, uh, running guns or, or arena shooters. But if you want to step up and you want to come into um, um, a different type of play style, and Battlefield is a completely different play style, there isn't another game out there that I have found that gives you this experience. Mm. So I, I really think that it's going to be a great shooter. It's, it's going to do a lot of things that, that really hasn't been done before. And I think it's going to give you um, a play style that is highly addicting and very rewarding if you want to work at it and put in some time. So you, do you think just the person who's used to playing Call of Duty, I mean, you're obviously a diehard fan, I understand that, but someone who, who may not understand going into it and see that it is more strategic, it's more just sitting there and, and you know, be more strategic. And do you think they're going to enjoy this kind of game? I, I really think that it comes down to the type of person that it is. I really do because here's the thing you're I think you're either one or two type of a person right you're either one who is narrow minded and only sees one side of things or you're open minded where you can adapt and look at the bigger picture on things okay and I don't want to say that one group is different over the other but I think everyone should have an open mind as gamers in general and play games that they may not normally play or, mm -hmm. you know, really try to experience something. It's like, um, you know, really throw down and just try to have a good time playing everything out there because you might find that you really like it. So I guess really to answer your question, John, um, yes, I think I think Call of Duty player Call of Duty players will love this game and I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. Um, there are modes, there are quite a few game modes, uh, one in particular where it's team deathmatch, which would be more or less kind of an equivalent to what Call of Duty is, uh, to where there's two teams of 12, 12 on 12, as far as I know, it might be more, I don't know. Um, and then you just run around and you get to a certain amount of kills and the round's over. So they do have a game mode like that, if you prefer that style, but they also have, you know, rush and conquest and all these objective based mm -hmm. modes that. Uh, make it a little bit more in depth. So, hmm. yeah, I think I think I think any type of player, shooter or non-shooter, would really enjoy this game or get some out of it. Mm. And I hope I really hope EA and Dice send the check they promised me this time. I really huh. do. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, fuck them. They need to hire me. I want to be a spokesperson for that shit. <laughs> I, I, I gotta download this game on the 360 or yeah I mean, really it's only gonna go to, to the 10th Johnny so you have till the 10th before the beta oh, stops is it a link I can play with you no yeah yeah we, we you playing on Xbox yeah 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 we'll, we'll just log on and um get in a party and we'll join a room I'm and down. It's, yeah. is it free yeah right now free till the 10th okay and then um then you take it off and it comes out the 25th okay. yeah, see the the convenient thing is the squads are four men yeah and, uh, is, is so all of us all four of us could get on a squad just by ourselves is, and is the learning curve pretty steep though for someone just jumping right into it no nah, it's going to depend on like because you're starting off you're not going to have like red dot you're going to have iron sights with you know probably the, the most useful gun but as you play you unlock better equipment for your guns and it gets more and more advanced they introduce it over time so like if you pick the medic class you're not going to have the defibrillator to revive people right away. You unlock that. So it's, it's not, not going to throw really, all this stuff at you. It's really yeah. no different than, say, like an RPG. You start out bare bones and you just mm -hmm. grind and work it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. The learning curve, if you go in by yourself without any of your friends or any help, is, would be huge. If you go in with somebody, uh, with some friends and learn together, or you go in with somebody who knows a little bit about it, like me, I'll come in, we'll help, I'll help you, talk you through it. Uh, you'll have no problem. You'll have no problem. Okay, cool. Yeah. The thing that most people are going to be kind of surprised by if they've never played it before is uh, going from Call of Duty to this. Like, if you're expected to do tasks with each class. So if you're playing the Assault class, you're also expected to drop health packs constantly and heal. Like, the other day, I was playing with Jason, and I'd be at the top of the leaderboard with only a couple of kills, but that's because all I was doing was dropping health packs and reviving people. Yeah, he, know, was, he was doing his job. Yeah, yeah, I will say he was doing his job. That's what he was supposed to do at that point. If you and, just want to kill shit, this is not the game for you. Like even Jason, you play support with machine guns and shit. You still have to drop ammo for people. Yeah, absolutely. I'm guarding uh, MCOM stations. I'm dropping C4 around areas where the enemies mm. will come in. I'm holding it down. I'm, I'm resupplying people. 
Uh, you know, it, it's so much fun. It's so much deeper than any other shooter I've played. It's really, really good. Hmm. Um, it's, and it's really it's rewarding pair. when you are, like I said, like you are one piece of a pie that is huge and, and you have to do your job. And when you do it, it just, it makes it work and it's really rewarding and you get, and this is different as opposed to other uh, Battlefield series of games. They really reward you for doing your job. Now they really give you a lot of points. They rank you up quick. You know, they give you the guns. They, they unlock. I was like fully unlocked on the support class in no time. I was just, mm. I was just playing like I normally do. I was just doing my job. Let's it was it great. Tonight, dude. Get me pumped. Yeah. Yeah. It's Let's good. It yeah. I'll play sure. with you. All yeah, right. for sure. It's good stuff. You got me at pie. <laughs> you sold me a pie. <laughs> so yeah, I I mean really to tell you the truth, that that's all I've really been playing. I I've been getting on Steam a little bit. Um gosh, I should go look and see. I don't even remember. I really it's just been Battlefield 3. I've been trying to take advantage of it with, with the beta release, so um that's understandable. Other than that, um I can't think of anything else. And I've already taken up too much time. So no, that was interesting. I it was, it was actually interesting to hear. I hope I got you a little excited like, about it, Johnny, because I know I know you're kind of on the fence, and you want to get. I know you want to get involved with it. I it, um, you know what it is. I'd Here love is to help it, like, you or like play. I with will. You. I will tell you what I think a lot of people think about shooters, but never say is I'm worried about coming online and sucking and not being able to pull my own weight and feeling like an idiot because of it. That's what. That's what one of my concerns is. I especially never playing a battlefield. Well, my, you, my, oh, yeah, my suggestion, Johnny, is just if you have a controller, just get the cheapest controller. <laughs> uh, <stay on>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I like that. Here, here's the thing with that, Johnny, just to finish up on that. And that I think that is a, a very valid uh, point. And I think a lot of people do think that. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go in by yourself and try to just like figure it out um, and spend, you're going to spend a lot more time getting angry because you you may not know exactly what to do yeah um let's all get together in a squad and just it, all it would take is like t- 10 15 minutes for you to look through the classes look through the guns you know we'll tell you what each class does what they are responsible for and then we hit the battlefield and you just hang out and we we have fun and uh, now pete you brought up each squad has four i isn't that fantastic? Think of all of us, the all gen gamers, all four of us in a squad, each a different class, doing their job, just having we, a good time. Now that tra- sounds like we a tried blast. that at Borderlands and didn't work very well. <laughs> well, yeah, it, that didn't. I remember. I think I broke a controller. I don't know what that happened. One. I, didn't like. Yeah, we know what happened. We got stuck in that area with that I'm, one. I'm, I would like to try that again. <laughs> we should try it again. Yeah, we should pick that up again and try it because that's a fun game. I've, I've, been gr- I've been grinding on it for about six months now, so I think I'm all right. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> you can fight that boss that fucking hit me once and I was dead. <laughs> yeah. Kept spawning in front of him, boom, dead. Yeah, spawned in front bullshit. of him, boom, dead. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah, so that, that's check it, it for out. Battlefield. That's uh-huh. the Battlefield uh-huh. Roundup. Sorry. So there's gonna be a campaign mode. You, you just have have you played that yet? Or is that there's not in the beta? Not in the beta. No. Nope. Okay. Oh, and another thing, just quickly, I'm gonna pull a Pete door here. I love this. Yeah, I love it. Another thing here is that the game is gonna feature co-op. Now, it's not four-player co-op, but it is two-player co-op. But that is a different experience that we've never seen before um, in, a, uh, in a Battlefield game. So you don't even have to go online and quote-unquote, you know, not pull your own weight or get owned or do whatever. You can just get with a buddy and play through the campaign at your own pace, at your own level. That mm. is going to be, I think that's that cool. is, I think even if the game didn't have online, I think that's worth it just in itself. I mm-hmm. really do. Mm-hmm. It's going to be, going to be great. So there's something else there for you, Johnny. So are you getting a PC and console version? Yeah, I'll get a PC and uh 360. Yeah. yeah. I'm starting by uh, buying it on PC and I don't and, know, I might just avoid the console version altogether. I'm going to pick it up on 360 later on down the road, but I'm going to get a PC day one. I've already mm-hmm. pre-ordered it. So. You just on the PC, you just get it through Origin, and then you they'll even let you preload it. So, like, I think at midnight, it just launches. Wow, that's cool. So, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be there streaming it live. I'm gonna play all night. I'm gonna do it's gonna be awesome. Cool. Wait, where is it launching at midnight? Um, well, that's not confirmed, but I did read on their forums that they if you pre order it on Origin, which is well, you have to launch it there anyway through any. And if you're doing it on PC, they let you preload it. So, prior to the game coming out, maybe the day before, I'm assuming. They'll let you download the entire game and just have it on your system. 
And then when the game releases, which I'm assuming would be at midnight, like most, Mm -hmm. you know, most, most times it does, um, it will just launch. It will already be downloaded. So there's no download time. You just launch it and go. So nice. I might do that. Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to that. Okay. I'm done. I'm sorry. Gag me. No, keep, no, don't keep going. Okay. So what battlefield is, (laughs) what is this battlefield? Let's let's start over. Let me just restart the whole thing. Mm-hmm. There, there was one more game I, I forgot to mention just while uh, while Jason's done here. So you're done. I picked. <laughs> <laughs> I went to uh, Digital Press last week, as uh, oh, I, know yeah, I mentioned yeah. before. Tell oh. us about that. Awesome, awesome experience. I mean, this is my third time going there. It's in Clifton, New Jersey, and their website is digitpress.com, and they've got an unbelievable selection of just random games for vintage to modern. But the, like the retro games they have, the that they have are just amazing. Like stuff for the Microvision. Uh, channel oh, wow. f i mean like random old school shit you don't that, even see that anywhere no, out here no yeah you yeah. don't wow. so uh and i made like it was cool because i made like a tweet and put something on facebook that i'm gonna be there at this day and i had uh freddie uh 78 strider strikes back showed up oh cool so that was kind of cool awesome yeah so uh freddie and i hung out at uh, digital press i picked up a game a couple games i picked up uh writing hero writing hero for the neo geo Oh yeah, uh, good, good game, good, good uh, motorcycle game. Uh, Johnny, you've played it, I'm assuming. Yeah, I know, I know. Did you, did you get it with the box and all that? I got it with the box, everything. How much? The AES, uh, twenty five. Eh, yeah, twenty twenty five for that for sure. Maybe, maybe it was thirty. Forget. I think it was like around thirty. It wasn't hmm. bad. I picked up uh, unopened mint, unopened uh, Primal Rage for the Super Nintendo, sealed. Oh wow! Really? Perfect condition. I paid nineteen ninety nine for it. Huh. That's a pretty good deal, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sealed. Yeah. yeah, hell yeah. And the uh, last thing, I, last thing I got there was uh, a Neo Geo memory card mm. w- with a box and everything. I I didn't own one of those before. And that was four hundred. That was about five hundred sixty. No, <laughs> that was like yeah. that was like thirty bucks. So it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Do you have one of those, Johnny? What's that? The, the memory, memory cards? Card? Yeah, they're cool. Of course, you, yeah. You can bring uh, game of- yeah. You can put them in the the console, and then you can bring them to. And the I arcade. never did any of that. I wish I could do that stuff now. Yeah. yeah, you know, they actually—it's funny that kind of idea was the Neo Geo came up with a long time ago, and now they have it for. Oh, what's that racing game where you actually you put you know you put in your card and updates your stats for your? Oh yeah, your, Initial D. Yeah, you yeah. know, like a lot of yeah. those games are really big. Actually, I had a friend of mine that was addicted to that stuff. Yeah, that's a great. It's game. a really great concept. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Neo Geo was just—I saw your your review recently. You posted on the the collection. Yeah. Compilation uh-huh. disc. Yeah, stuff. so many good games for that uh, that system. It really is. Well, you know, you know, it's funny. I, I guess I got to say about that. I, I, I wouldn't even call it a review as much as I call it maybe just a look back and a blabbering by myself. But um, it's just yet. Yeah, it's funny. All of those games were so cool, and it's so funny. Somebody's like, oh, you know, the Neo Geo games are mediocre. Like some people posted that in the on the video, and I'm just like, really? Like I think you know people say that who weren't around for that time. You know, young, young, yeah. yeah younger people nowadays that just pl- played them on ROMs. They don't realize how big of a fucking deal the Neo Geo was in arcades. They had they, they, any real video gamer knows the big deal that was mm-hmm. end of story, you know? So man, there's my rant. <laughs> <laughs> so about battlefield, let me tell you about this. Hey, what's going on? With that? <laughs> I have no idea. Hey, 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 let me tell you about shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. We haven't hit Pete yet. We better get to him. All right, let's get to Pete. Pete, what have you been playing, buddy? Well, just to mix things up, uh, I'll start with, I've been playing uncharted three. Let me just tell the crazy story about how I'm actually playing it. This is one yeah. of the, the, the no, yeah, in, most insane things I've heard for a promotion for a game. So if you go to Subway, and I'm, I'm not even kidding, you go to Subway and you get a drink from them, their cup, it'll have a code to go on Subway's website. You put that code in and they give you access to the full online multiplayer mode of Uncharted 3 to play right now. Wow. I and saw you're the- losing weight. <laughs> 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 Do you say hi to Jared? Eat fresh. Yeah. So uh, I actually, I didn't, I usually go to Subway a lot, but uh, Stormcloud Rains from YouTube actually hooked me up with a, a code, which was very awesome of her. So yeah. I, yeah, I've been playing that for today and yesterday. I got it yesterday. Um, is it limited time or is it like? It's good until the game come, uh, comes out on the first. Wow. So yeah. yeah, they're letting people play 
the entire multiplayer mode with all like it's unlocked nothing is locked everything is open and everything you do is just going to carry over to when the single player you know when the game comes out that's the best thing coming out of subway right now it's it's awesome and you know if you buy if you get multiple codes you can also unlock uh like extra stuff so when you get a code you have the option if you'd rather if you, if you want just the option to play multiplayer or if you'd rather have like a bonus thing like a, a skin or a theme for your ps3 or just random shit yeah so that's more for people that make repeat visits um <laughs> repeat. Now, i know i think about it, i saw a commercial with drake and he was all like talking about subway it was pretty funny the game so far i mean because i played the beta a little bit for like a day or two as well um it's fun you know i played the multiplayer for uncharted 2 and this is it feels almost exactly the same except for one big difference and that's like the dynamic maps that they have and i'm actually not quite a big fan of them to be honest i kind of prefer my big open maps with like all the hiding places and everything but what i mean is there are levels where for instance you play um there's two trains like speeding right next to each other in a tunnel and that is the map you play and the the trains are like just kind of like speeding up slowing down but they're always next to one another and you jump from train to train and it's like this really high paced action map really close quarters and another one is there's a plane on a runway and there's like trucks around it speeding after the plane and that's the playing field for a certain amount of time before the maps kind of change over to their um static map area and then another one is like a dust storm will kind of kick up which is pretty cool i like that one where everything gets really hard to see um so i've noticed they've been changing that for it but i want to say though the the multiplayer uh user interface like in the menus and stuff for uncharted is really cool it's really easy to group up with uh friends and the upgrade system is done really well uh it, this is the closest thing to socom since socom th- uh confrontation on ps3 I mean, it's, it's pretty solid. There's a lot of places to hide. The only thing about Uncharted that online, I feel, or just the single player doesn't bother me, but online where precision is needed, it's a very loose and sloppy game. And don't take this the wrong way, but the controls are very different. Um, like when you're not scoping down the scope of your gun, it's very hard to aim, at least for me right now. And almost every gunfight just involves who can hit their trigger the fastest to aim and shoot which i guess can be the same for most other shooters but in uncharted it's especially important because if you're not aiming you're not really hitting your enemy um but the, the it's crazy being able to jump around these levels it's uh it's very vertical and not just a horizontal game where you're constantly scaling up buildings and shit and jumping around it's very different so if you guys get the chance i'd recommend uh heading down the subway and trying the game out because then you can try it out whatever you have whatever, you know what i have in the buy it i have a, it has I, to be the states or something i have a question pete mm-hmm. um your your subway you go to does, yeah does it have uh sugar cookies um i prefer the the double chocolate do they have any goddamn sugar cookies but there? do they have any sugar cookies yeah, i don't know i i, I the thing it always the double chocolates always catch my eye and if they don't have them i don't get any oh the double chocolate is good well will you look for me next time because i'm really trying to find them <laughs> they don't have them here mm. really if you find me a subway that has them here i will suck your dick i will do things that are... <laughs> <laughs> i will do things okay go to paradise bakery right over here they nope. have the best cookies no, yeah, no. their chocolate chip are pretty good. Their sugar cookies are pretty good too. They're, I like soft sugar cookies. Theirs are like, they fall apart. This Snickerdoodles. Yeah, those are pretty good. Yeah. I just need someone to bake them for me. I'll let you know if they have them here. I'll be at Subway tomorrow for this uh, Uncharted Three thing for sure. There you go. Well, I mean, I'm from Portland. You know, I'm from the Northwest too, sure. so yeah. I know that Portland has them. So now your your mileage may vary because I've heard that some people's subways uh, do not have this promotion going on like they go in there and they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about just look for cups that have like choose your adventure or some shit it'll have uncharted on the cup and supposedly bags of chips have it as well imagine going in the subway like bags of chips have it (laughs) yeah you got the uncharted cup here they're like what you want lettuce on what (laughs) give me a goddamn sugar cookie (laughs) i don't care what you said to me give me a sugar cookie i'm gonna bring my controller there because if they don't have it i'm gonna throw my controller at the guy (laughs) 
There you go. <laughs> Use it like an axe on their head. <laughs> Tell them to put this in the foot Threaten to kill their cat. I'll be like, what the fuck? And destroy this head. <laughs> throw a cat at them. Stuff yeah. this in a foot long wheat. <laughs> yeah, because Greg, you're a big fan of the Uncharted series, huh? Yes, I will de- I will get that day one for sure. I will it's get amazing. It it's it's really kind of weird how they partner up with Subway of all places, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like you'd think they'd partner up with GameStop, like, hey, pre-order our game and get access to all the online multiplayer. But they chose Subway. Whatever. It makes it easier to get a code. Yeah. Um, other than that, though, I was playing Battlefield with Jason uh, online, and it's it has some problems with, like, pairing up and getting in the correct squads and everything. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and this is the PC version we're talking about. And I just want to go and say one more time, this is this is the point where I've realized that, yeah, Playing with a mouse and keyboard is as cumbersome as it is for me with Battlefield at times. It's kind of hard. Um, I got to remap my controls still. It's a little, I, I can't stand that goddamn, uh, what is it? The control button, the crouch, uh, or X to Z to prone. I can't, I can't do it. Uh, so I got to remap some things, but going from PC to 360, I couldn't do it. I, I literally turned on my 360. Well, I was going to play it on 360 first. Let me just say that. I didn't have plans to play the PC one the day when I was going to jump on 360, but the servers were down. So I played the PC one and it was amazing. And then I jumped on 360. I played it for like 30 minutes and shut it off. I was done because the controls, I, I couldn't aim. I was, I was just sucking and I'm like, fuck this went right back on PC. And that's what I'm going to be buying it on. Um, especially because the graphics too on PC are just so much more clear. It's easier to see enemies as well, but uh, I'm enjoying that. But well, also, I have <laughs> I haven't played as much Eco Shadow of the Colossus as I thought I would have. I'm warning you, Pete. I'm warning you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually today I just went back on the Eco and uh, no spoilers, but I'm at that point in the game where the big twist kind of happens. And uh, that's where I'm up to. So I'm pretty close to the end. And Shadow of the Colossus, I still haven't played anymore because of another game. And my my God, like this, this game is. It's taken hold of me. I'm actually on it right now, camping it. And that can, can is. Can I guess what it is? Go yeah. ahead. English cram school? It is not. It is. I like the sound. Oh, fuck me. Okay. <laughs> The Pokemon trading card game online. Oh. I've been spending so much fucking time on this game because I've discovered how to train, car- uh, how to trade cards with people online. So like all those fucking booster packs that I bought, I'm trading cards now. I'm building my decks up and. That's control over your head. This guy's crazy. <laughs> He's crazy. Now let me just say something because I've been talking about this game the past couple of shows. Do not bother with this game. Unless you're going to buy packs or buy booster codes online. Um, Otherwise, it's going to suck. Because the whole scheme with this is you can play for free. It's in beta mode right now. You can play for free. They give you a couple of free decks. But if you go online and try and play with those decks, you're going to get destroyed. Because you're going to play against people like me that will use my fucking Gengar and Lost Zone your ass until I beat you in a few rounds. (laughs) Is Is that the Pokemon theme we're hearing? Oh, of course. It's amazing. Actually. Yes. It's like an 80s like, <laughs> yeah, anime. It's awesome. Movie. So, um, yeah, so, you know, you, you, everybody hears me speak highly of this and they're going to go try it, like, expecting, you know, the most amazing experience of their lives. But you're not going to have that unless you actually spend some money. Um, so you can do this one of two ways. The way that I would recommend is if you do, if you don't want to be cited going into retail stores and buying physical cards, you can buy booster codes online. And you can either do that. Um, thought I just had a thought someone just traded with me online here. Hold on. <laughs> so you're playing right now? Crazy. Well, I've got it up on my browser because. I put trades up with people and it'll notify me if He's someone just accepts my trade. Over there. It's just rocking out. So anyway, you can either go on eBay like I do and you can buy the codes that people sell there. Wow, this is like the full extended version of the song. God damn. <laughs> Still got another minute. I'm wow. so used to hearing the, the uh, just the opening version for like the TV show, but this is the, the full fucking thing. Right, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you can go on eBay. Yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> 
Rock and roll. You can buy the codes on there, which will generally, if you buy a bunch of them at a time, um, like 50 codes will be like $35, $40 or whatnot. Uh, or you can buy them on Pokemon card sites. Like I don't do that because they'll generally be about $1.50 per code. And these codes will give you a booster pack uh, of 10 cards. Now, what I would suggest is if you're not sure if you're going to like the game or whatnot, buy like buy 20 or 30 booster credits. And... Um, what happens is you can get, you open up the boosters, you get your rare cards, you get your commons, whatever. You can try and build a deck, but then what you can do is you can jump online and trade your cards with other people. Now, let's just say that you get the rarest card currently in the game, and that's the Yen Mega card. That thing, people will trade like up to 10 boosters for that. So, so you do you, kinda, have, you have that card? Oh, I have two of them. How much, how much <laughs> does that cost? Well, I got it in packs. So the okay. thing is, if I wanted to, I could trade those two cards. For like twenty packs. How much could you sell it for? Yeah, how much could you sell that that one for on its own for? It's a digital card. Yeah, yeah, but how much money could you make off that? Someone sold it on eBay for ten fifty. Ten ten dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. Oh. Generally, a booster is about a dollar. So if you look at it that way. Um, oh, so it's not, they're not that crazy. I was kind of thinking people are spending like $150 on a rare no, card no. and owning everybody. No. Like the money that I'm spending on this game is not for individual cards. It's to buy the boosters. And then the booster will give me 10 cards. Like I've almost, I almost have 2,000 cards right now. Would you prefer ha rather to have a physical copy of the card than the digital copy? I mean, it's kind of, kind of weird to me. No, because I don't have anybody to play Pokemon with in real life. And I'm not going to spend money on the cards and have no point to using them. Um, as a kid, I used to collect them, but I never played it. Yeah. Uh, so since, you know, to me, this is the next best, best thing. You know, I get to build my decks and whatnot. And yeah. sure, it's a little weird when, you know, they're putting in foil cards and non-foil cards in a digital card game, you know, like regular and hollow edition and everything like that shit don't matter to me. What's fun to me is just building up a deck and their online mode is so cool because you can, they have chat rooms so you can like talk to people and be like, I'll, I'm bartering with people like I'll sit in this chat room all day and anybody that not all day, but for like an hour or two while I'm playing and try and trade cards with people and build up my decks. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and the other option is if you do buy the cards in real life, which, you know, Hey, you want to get some physical cards, every pack that you get, which is like $4, you'll get a booster credit for online. So I know some people like, uh, Holly dog on my lens and storm cloud rains. Uh, they both play this. They're both pretty addicted to it. And, thanks to them talking about it all the time that I gave it a shot. Do, uh, they, do you own, do you, I got a question. Do you own them online? I haven't played them online yet. Uh, cause it's still in beta mode. So it's not the easiest thing to add friends. So essentially we'd have to meet up in a chat room on there and add each other that way. And do you think you could destroy them? With the decks I have right now? Yes. Because I've Pure spent annihilation. A lot, because I've spent <laughs> a lot of time building these decks up. Got my Tyranitar deck and, Fucking my, my Gengar deck. Uh, I don't know if people might remember me talking about my Gengar. Well, yeah, that deck fucking owns. <laughs> so the practice games, I play against the newbies. They don't even know what the hell's happening to them. The game's over and that's it. Wow. But then I go in the ranked and I get my ass kicked. So I got to try and build better decks. You know, yeah. I get lucky once in a that's while. That's cool. It sounds like it's a fun game you enjoy. Yeah. Like I said, though, don't, you know, try it out and uh, just see if you like the basic premise and if you seem like you're going to like it. Buy some booster codes online, get some packs, open them up, see what you got, uh, trade, whatever, build a deck, and if you really like it, then start buying more, and you might get addicted to it. And so I, I missed a major thing here. Like, is this on the Wii? This is, oh, sorry, this is on the PC. A Pokemon tra trading ga game on the PC, okay. PokemonTCG.com. Is it going to come out for the Wii? No, no, this is strictly browser-based uh, Pokemon trading card game online for the computer. Mm. Pokemon! It's, it's essentially free to play, but like I said, you're not going to get anywhere unless you're either spending money in the stores or you're going on eBay or Pokemon sites and buying the booster credits. My question is, where can I get the soundtrack? Whoa, I, whoa. I, the soundtrack. Uh, I don't know where the hell it is, though. I've had that since I first got on the Pokemon. That's hilarious. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Anything else? That is it. Fucking what? Pokemon trading card game. That's it. Greg, how about you? I mean, you mentioned earlier kind of what you've been playing. Did you ever ever end up picking Catherine up? Yes, I'm almost done with that game. The game's hard as hell. And what'd you think? Uh, what do you think of it's it? It's weird. Hold on. Where exactly are you up to? Um, 
I'm trying to think. I'm completely freaking out. Um, and I'm just trying to think about the tower. I think there's like, they've got like different number? levels, right? Um, yeah. I don't recall the number. I believe I'm just, I'm right before the last stage, effectively. I, I'm i curious, do you ever get to see any any of the Catherine's boobies at all? No, no. Damn. No. Now, did you get up to the level in the tower, and you'll know, the, t the, the level where there's essentially no checkpoint, and it's like a humongous level, where there's no checkpoints? It's like 6-2 or 6-3, I think. Yeah, so I remember there being a massive gap between... I don't remember ever there being a level where there's no checkpoints, but, but I remember like there being a the huge beginning. gap. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's pretty crazy. Like, uh, and I have it on easy. So, and even uh, on easy, yeah. it's so. I was going to say, like, are you playing on easy or normal? Because supposedly normal is like hard mode. <laughs> yeah. So I made the mistake of putting on normal. So I'm like, hey, you know, I don't want it to be too easy. Fucking shit. If any word of advice, if anybody out there is buying Catherine, put it on easy. There is yeah. no shame. Put it on easy. Yeah. <laughs> I figured I'd get through it because I'm not really good. I'm not really good at puzzles, but I thought I'd give it a shot because it just seemed like an interesting concept. But it's pretty fun. I just, you know, I'm at the last stage and it's freaking hard. So it, it, Catherine, I still never finished it because I'm literally right at the end to like mm -hmm. right at the end. But the, I only have like two or three more puzzles to go. But they are just they're not fun. I don't enjoy them. They're aggravating. They get me mad. <laughs> Um, it, it got smash that point. fucking controller, Peter. No, like you feel I, won't, it's, I won't smash it. Uh, it's frust uh, frustrating when, like, it's very stressful when he's coming. Out. Jason and I were playing it at PAX, and mm -hmm. like, it's so frustrating when when the, the hand is coming up towards you and big ass fork. Yeah, yeah. Big you ain't fork. seen nothing yet. The la that's, yeah, exactly. that's easy shit. Later in the game, there's babies and even, there's yeah. Well, we were at level five, and we were about ready to just start smashing shit. Yeah, it's it, it, the problem is the story is so awesome and you just want yeah. to see what happens and the puzzles exactly. just they start to get in the way. It's like, yeah. I don't give a shit. I just want to see what happens next. Yeah. How long how does it take to beat Pete? It's actually a pretty lengthy game. It's uh, if you're playing a normal like me, I'm probably about 15 hours into it. 10, yeah. maybe anywhere. I don't know exactly. It's probably like 12 ish hours. I'm in. Wow. If they release, it really depends how bad you are at the puzzles. And I'm not bad at them, but it. I generally don't finish them in one try. That sounds about right. I put about a dozen hours into it, maybe a little bit more. Hmm. Are you going good or bad? Or are you? I'm going stretch? good. Okay, I'm going bad. <laughs> <laughs> Can you stay neutral, or do you have to pick a side? Uh, I think whichever way, like the little arrow is, even if it's slightly pointed one direction, then you you go that direction. I don't think it's there's any level. There's only there's no amplitude to it. It's just if you happen, you have to be on one side of that. Yeah. center so. well there are multiple endings like there's a ton of different endings yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. decisions but from what i've read the endings are only dependent on the um now do you have your are you playing it on 360 or ps3 360 i'm playing 360 do you have your 360 online when you play this game yes i do okay so the questions that they ask you between mm -hmm. stages where it's like oh and then they pull yeah. and then they show you like everybody Yep. That's playing the game. Their answer. Supposedly, yep. the endings are only based on those decisions. From what I've read, <laughs> yeah, all my answers are like bad. Right? It's like, would you rather stay with your girlfriend or cheat on her your whole life or something? You know, it's like the obvious <laughs> question where it's like trying to go the wrong way or whatever. Right? So, I've been. I just decided, hey, you know, I'll go bad and see how it goes. And I, I think that obviously the main story is going to stay the same way, right? So, I don't know. I haven't really read about the different endings and the different paths and stuff like that. I just chose one way, thought the story was interesting, and I'll let you know how it goes. That's cool. I've been meaning to pick it up. It's starting yeah. to drop in price. It's starting to go on sale for like 40 bucks and stuff. Yeah. Now, so. yeah. <laughs> what about the special edition? Is that holding value? I haven't checked quite yet. You know, and I'll be quite honest, I don't think so. Because so many people bought Catherine and these collector's edition. I don't think that's going to be worth much. What will be worth much is, let me tell you this shit, the Dark Souls collector's edition. And I have a, a rant and problem with it as well. Uh, when they first announced the collector's edition, um, now let me see, let me bring up the joystick here to get the facts straight here. Uh, da, 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 da. Here it is, all right. When they first announced the collector's edition of Dark Souls, they said it would come with uh, an art book, a 
mini strategy guide like what that came with the first dark souls uh which was an amazing mini strategy guide that thing was like a godsend and is the reason why people paid so much money to get their hands on that collector's edition uh an art book with a soundtrack and what else i think is that it and um 10k so they brought the game out in the uk first it's already out there and they decided to digitize the mini strategy guide so you open it up you still get the art book you still get the physical soundtracks uh but the strategy guide is it's it's a code to download it online which is a load of shit. so that yeah, made fun. a lot of people angry but here's the thing with the u.s version our strategy guide and our soundtracks and the hold on let me see here um all right, well, let me just read what Joystick has here. When we, when we received our review copy of Dark Souls, we noticed the collector's edition contents were exactly as they were described back in May. Don't worry, if you pre order Dark Souls in North America, you're still getting the same bonus content, albeit a different format. The package still comes in Metal 10 and features a copy of the game and a hardbound art book. What's changed, however, is that the mini strategy guide, behind-the-scenes videos, and original soundtrack are no longer included on physical media, but are instead of via a download token. And then the UK, like I said, they, they actually get a physical soundtrack and uh, videos and whatnot behind the scenes. But that's a load of shit. Uh, <laughs> so I, I planned on getting the collector's edition for that, but when I went on Amazon, they're actually, they're sold out of pre-orders for the 360 and the PS3 of the oh. collector's edition. So I ha I'm settling for the regular edition um, on the 360 and i'm getting a lot of love for that game hey it's amazing wow yeah, yeah it's crazy i yeah. now i've been using amazon for a while and this is the first game that i've personally tried to order uh in the past it's year like pre-order in the past year where they sold out of it before it even come out with pre-orders so that i was kind of surprised so hmm. getting the regular one on 360 and yes i know the community is going to be much larger on the ps3 but i don't really care i'd rather play with the more casual audience the people that haven't experienced well a larger amount of people that haven't played demon souls so that way when i go online and invade their games as a dark phantom i'll fucking own their ass you know i can't <laughs> wait for that that's one of the coolest things about demon souls is that you were able to invade people's games and like try and kill them and let me say this is dark souls is one of the games where i've remained the most spoiler free out of all the new games coming out like i have avoided screenshots and videos like the plague for this i've only seen like the original trailer and then the footage that they showed off from like e3 with that boar with the metal shit and then one more video with like these cola cthulhu kind of fucking squid guys and that's it so i really don't know much of what to expect going into this game and from what i've heard it's fucking brutal a lot harder than demon souls because it's an open world now and it doesn't tell you where to go. It doesn't hold oh your hand at God. all. So you're like wandering this open world and you get to some enemies that kill you in like one hit. And you're like, well, I guess I shouldn't be going that way. But you actually are supposed to be. It's just that the game is that fucking hard. Wow. Yeah. So can't wait. Um, <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm total. I'm, I, it's like, no, I'm going to get I'm going to get beat down for 40 hours. Can't wait. It's exactly. well, it's just that the online system of Demon Souls is just so engrossing. Like there there's still nothing out there like it. Just the whole thing of joining up with random strangers and invading their games and there's a class that can drop supposedly like giant monsters into other people's game worlds. I can't. Oh my wow. God. So and uh, the coolest thing is if this game discourages like text texting and chat uh voice chat. So if you try and like do voice chat in 360 or ps3 it actually boots you out of i think i forget it's it, they either boot you out of the game or the chat it's not yeah it, i think they just disable it so they don't allow xbox party chat or ps3 chat at all and i'm pretty sure you can't i could be wrong on this but i don't think you can text message either um you might be able to on the ps3 but i think the 360 but from software themselves put this into the code of the game so they actually Microsoft isn't doing it themselves. It's the developers locking this feature out of the game. Wow. Because the whole point is you don't know who you're pairing up with in this game. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just a crazy online system. I, I've always loved it. It seems that with that game, the people who fell in love with it love, like, are obsessed. They, they, you know, they rant and rave. They, you know, for the, some people like me who played it, I, I, I didn't get the magic of it. It's unfortunate. And kind of, so I'll be living vicariously through you on that one. Were you playing it online though? 
No, definitely not. No, no. <laughs> that, no, you didn't have your PS3 online when you were playing Demon Souls? No. That is why. The true magic of Demon Souls is having the online activated. Because this is... It's a single-player MMO, essentially. That's the best way to think about it. Because when you're playing in your single-player, it's not like people are going to look down upon you because you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. The thing is... It, you're anonymous, so people will never see your name. So even if you're acting like a noob, they'll never know. But the thing is, and this is going back because I haven't played Demon Souls in a while, so forgive me if I have any wrong information, but as you wander around the single-player mode, you'll see messages that people left on the ground, like, don't go this way, danger. Yeah, I remember hearing that. I remember hearing you know, reading about that. Uh, yeah. Don't fall down this pit. Like, all different messages they can leave. Um, mm -hmm. But then, like, if you die and you go into your phantom mode, you can be... You can enlist yourself, like you can leave a rune on the ground that will show up in other people's single player games and they can summon you into their game world up to, uh, I think it, in, D in Demon Souls it was up to two other people, I think. Um, and they can summon them into your game world and if you defeat the boss of that world, you get your body back. So instead of, you know, they give you different options. So, I don't know, it was just very engrossing. And when you get to the point where you can invade people's games, it's unbelievable. Like you, you try and go by like the most powerful monster, like the, their game world opens up to you and you're in the level. It's essentially like you're an enemy. So if you die and you lose your body, another option is to invade somebody's world and kill them to get your body back. So you can like hide by like the most powerful enemy. You can hide by the boss. And then when they get to the boss, you fucking come out of nowhere and backstab them. It's an unbelievable feeling. <laughs> I, remember I, I needed my body back and I like, I hid down in this portion where once they drop down in this hole, they're confronted with like a really tough boss. And I forget the name. People might remember. It's like this guy with a big samurai sword. So I hid down there behind like the pillars and the guy drops down and I just fucking come out and backstab him. It was the most amazing feeling. And like from there on, I was sold wow. on that. Yeah. So yeah, Dark Souls. I can't wait till tomorrow. Can't wait. Mm. Oh, cool. tomorrow's out. It's out tomorrow. Yeah. So by the, oh, by the time shit. this podcast comes out, it'll been out for over a week. Yeah, yeah. so you'll be able to hear my yeah. impressions of it. Yeah. As long as I'm not playing Pokemon while I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm definitely playing Dark Souls. Cool. Anything else that you've been playing? No, that's it. Cool. cool. Well, how about we hit the forums, huh? Sure. Oh, we haven't, so, we haven't sure. done that in like two years. So Greg, this is a segment where we... we, uh, we uh, answer questions you're welcome to stick around or if you need to take off either way we appreciate you joining us so Thanks. some of the, some of the questions might be uh, well most of them will probably be for maybe modern games so it's it's up to you like john said some of them are general game questions like oh what's your you know what's your favorite game for this system or whatnot so let's each pick pick a question let's see I have one. And I'll start it out. Jason, where can people post these questions? Oh, thank you, John. Yes, people can post these questions on our forums, in our forums, rather, at www.allgengamers.com. You can also visit us online at www.allgengamers.com. And you can also, <laughs> but that's not all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not all. Okay. Now we got you can visit us on uh, Facebook, Twitter. We got a YouTube page. What oh, you know, we got all kinds of stuff. Contact at all Gen Gamers is the email for sending in audio questions and um, all that sort of thing. Uh, but in our forums, we have a section where you can post questions and we will answer them. And there's a whole bunch of pages we haven't been here in a while, so we're gonna hit it. I've got one here from Primal, posted back on May fourth. Hello. <laughs> says what do you yeah, think i was gonna say i was gonna say dig back into some of the older questions because we've had so many questions i'm digging since it's been so long yeah pete, you know, get I'm some surprises you, out here I, i'm dumpster diving at this point pete i am going <laughs> way back in time way back in time so yeah, we've got go may 4th post from primal which is even more screwed up because this is on the last page oh no it's not no this is page 23 i'm digging and he asks i just lost it he asks, what do you think is the most replayable video game genre? He says, I find that I usually go back to my shoot 'em ups and racing games. Just something about a, an addicting about beating the high scores or trying to beat track times. Yeah, that is that is definitely. So, so, so what was the question again? Question is, what do you think is the most replayable video game genre? I got to say fighting games. Definitely. Mm. Or MMOs, 
That's an easy one, right? I think platformers like Sonic the Hedgehog, Mario games, those are timeless, you know? Yeah, they are timeless. I, I could always go back and just start from the beginning and go to the end, and they can be pretty lengthy at times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. RPGs are on there. I'm going to surprise you guys. I'm going to say sports. Sports titles. Growing up, I used to play Madden a lot. Not so much anymore, but uh, the MLB series, uh, the show, it's a good one. Yeah, I think there's like two different types, you know? Like, there's the games where they're linear, and then there's some games that are non-linear. You know, like, you can have a game that has a start and then an end. Uh You know, then there's other games, like in a sports game, where there's an end, but it's different every time. Yeah. I find that same way with, like, racing games and Mm -hmm. shooters and, Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, definitely sports is in there, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. That's great. The casual game space, probably, right? Mm -hmm. The casual game space, a lot of replayability there. Oh, yeah. the point of it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like fucking Wii Sports, holy shit! I could play, uh, I could play Wii Sports the rest of my life. I love, I love that game, you guys. I love that game. You guys ever play Wii Sports anymore? Mm-hmm. The original Wii Sports. It's been a while since yeah. I picked up my Wii. Freaking bowling, <laughs> or I play golf with my. Well, I used to play golf with my dad all the time. Shit, man, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was great when they're Good from question. Primal. Thanks for the question. Almost thinking, should we like delete these out of here because? Like after we answer them, or ask can them? we do that? Because I don't. Yeah, because we're gonna end up asking them again. Yeah, I would hate to do that. We've got like twenty-seven pages. It'd probably be best if we delete. What do you guys think? What? I wouldn't <laughs> delete any. Oh, the. Oh, you mean the one that we answered already? Yeah, yeah, like the forum questions. Just the one we've answered. Yeah. I just try to remember what we've answered. No, I, I'm not like. Let me go delete ten pages. <laughs> <laughs> Let's de- delete the ones that we um, answer so that it's fine. I think I, we'll I, think I, I think can remember, remember what we've answered. All right. Yeah. In ten years, well, I'll ask you the same question. We'll see. <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to be going back to two-year-old posts. <laughs> <laughs> well, dumpster diving, you know. So anyway, that's my question. Okay. Okay. Here, here's a good one. I, I got a good one from uh, DJ Slime. This is from July 14th. Um, his question is: You're 80 years old. Your grandchildren ask you what game, what games were like in your youth. Oh my God, I, I'm terrified of those days. Uh, instead of telling them um, you find an old console and put uh, put something on for them to play, what would you get them to play? Bear in mind you're probably it says here you're probably in a generation with Nintendo consoles hooked up to your genitals and Microsoft, uh, you know, sticking things in your ass. Um, I said, "Jeez, okay." So what video games questions? are highly advanced in the future? I, you lost me at sticking things in my ass. What's the, what's the I know, question? It wouldn't be the first time for Jason. Yeah, John knows. Kind of games so basically, his, <laughs> his, his question is, um, you know, besides the future of getting anally raped by your consoles, is um, you have to show your grandchildren a video game from your generation. What would you show them and why? Um, I'll, I'll kind of start it off. I, I don't know. Let's see. Because anything I would show them, they'd be like, that's fucking shitty. You're bag. <laughs> so um, I don't know what I'd show them. I probably show them Street Fighter 2 and try to explain to them how important it was. But they'd be like, you're a fag, it's stupid. I'm going to go stick that thing up my ass. Um, John, what would you say? <laughs> Are we talking about a game or just a system? Are we, wait, showing it to who? Our grandkids. Yeah. We're done on our deathbed, yeah, okay. right? Okay. They're fucking 80 years old, Jason, and your, your grandkid comes over and says, Mr. Heine, uh, what did you used to play when you were a kid? Then I'm just sticking my, uh, you know, my Microsoft up my ass right now. Be like, I hope this is hospice here. Who is this? Yeah. <laughs> what did you play when you were a kid? Where's my sponge bath? Ooh, where's my pudding and jello? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Custer's, I would, uh, re- Custer's Revenge, right, John? Yeah, no. exactly. That's yeah. exactly the one no. I was going to say. Custer's Revenge. I won't even. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I probably refer to like the Nintendo NES days. You know, yeah. Super Mario Bros. Three, Zelda, um, Metroid. There's just so many classic. Uh, you know, start of so many great series of games on that one system. If you think mm. about it, you know that's that's kind of where it all started for a lot of big that are around even today. You know, so that's probably where I would start. Mm. And, and Custer's Revenge, of course, too. <laughs> Bust out freaking uh... twenty six hundred. <laughs> I would probably do the Sega Genesis. Sh- start off with Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, I knew him, that was coming. <laughs> show them where. I, no, but that's really where it, it kick started everything for me. Uh, and then I, you know, hey, if they want to play some games, let's do some like Altered Beast and Golden Axe and shit. You know, mm-hmm. simple yeah. enough where it's you know, it's pretty easy to pick up and play even if it's like your first game ever. So, 
I'd probably give Jason? him. I'd, I'd probably just give him an NES, you know, and a huge library of games there. Um, and I'd probably hit him with a PS2, because you know, in eighty years, I mean, shit. You would literally hit him with a PS2. Yeah, the fat one, the big brick, just upside the head. <laughs> Play this goddamn game console. Yeah, no, I, I'd probably give him an NES with that amazing library of games, and um, and then they would be like, "This is stupid." And then I'd be like, "Hey, here's a, here's here's a PS2. Have fun with that." Even the, okay. PS2, a great console. even the PS2, when we're 80, they're going to be like... Oh, it'd be so old. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They have so many games. to be a huge catalog. And, you know, the graphics are, you know, not 8-bit. So they may they may like that a little bit better. But I don't know. I mm. love the PS2, you know. Love that catalog of games. Greg? It's a tough one. I, I'm thinking, you know, if this... At that age, all the graphics even now are going to be garbage, right? So you got to look at something that's just got some fun associated with it. I I have to go back to Mario Super Mario Brothers. I think that's probably the one that I would say personally. Yeah, yeah they probably think the PS2 is like fucking playing a Pong console. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> exactly. True. Right. Did we all answer? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I got a question here from Levo Forty Five. This is posted. On uh, September 30th, 2010. Dumpster diving. 2010? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. So thank you for your patience. Uh, <laughs> if you're still listening. <laughs> if you're still alive. If you're still living. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm trying to get into this uh, Super Nintendo collecting, and uh, so could you help me out and name your top three Super Nintendo games and why? Oh, wow. That's good question. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll start. I'd probably refer him to uh, Super Mario Kart, uh, Final Fantasy 2, mm. and the third one would be, uh, man, Super Star Wars. Wait, sorry, what was the question? What games would Top someone three play? Super Nintendo games. Top three. He's Super trying to get games. into collecting Super Nintendo, and he wants to know top three games. Okay. There's so many, though. F-Zero is so good. It's up there, and uh, shit. Super, I don't know. That's my three. What's yours, Jason? Yeah, uh, my top three... <sighs> My God, so hard, so hard, so it. hard, it's so hard. Um, wow. Top three have to be uh, Super Mario World Two, Yoshi's Island. Oh yeah. Uh, Star Fox and um, F Zero. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Those are those are can't go wrong with any of those. Yeah, choices, those but... are all great choices. What about you, Mister Johnny Millennium? Oh, thank you. Um, Fuck, that's hard. Jesus Christ. It's, it's so, so hard. hard. <laughs> so hard. Like, oh. I, um, I actually hate these questions because it's like, you, if, I hate it when I get asked favorites because they don't really exist. Like, there's hundreds of them that are so good. Yeah, I, I can do a top 10, but I, it's, doing a top three is tough. Probably, you know, Final Fantasy 2 was really good. Damn, I'd probably say Final Fantasy 3 was really fucking good. Um, Secret of Mana was awesome. Are you speaking to the mic? He's speaking to the, you your speaking to the wall. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, Secret of Mana, um, Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3, uh, you know, like Link to the Past. Oh, yeah. Link to the Past. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Blazer, I love Act Razor. There's so many I like. Soul done. Blazer is a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I would say uh, if you're into RPGs, Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. Yeah, yeah that far. is fantastic. I, I, I do have to echo Link to the Past. That is quite an amazing game. Um, also, one that I really, really like that doesn't get mentioned too much in top tens, Kirby's Dream Land 3. Um, that's actually possibly my favorite Kirby game of all time. It's actually hard to find. That's it, of, it, it is, is the box. Yeah. It's I've seen the box itself sell on eBay for like, I think it was like, 80 bucks or some shit. Just the like box it, alone. Just yeah. the box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's a, it's really, it's especially the graphics in it. It's sort of got this hand drawn watercolor look. It's amazing. Is it really Yoshi's fun. Island kind of graphically? Um, a little bit. Think that just less, a little bit more, uh, not so harsh in the colors and lines. Like mm. it's got more of a hand drawn sketch look to it. Mm. Yeah. I believe they use the super FX chip to do that as well. Mm-hmm. Also Mega Man X. I, oh I, yeah, I, I really love Me- the first Mega Man X. I actually have never played X two or X three. So how about Earthbound? No one said Earthbound. Oh damn you! Oh Jesus! Yeah, Zach, That's the that thing game. though. You can't. It's just too many, too many great <laughs> games. Fuck yeah, yeah. Greg, how about you? <laughs> so hard. Uh, I'd say 
Super Mario Kart probably is one of them. F Zero and uh, what Final Fantasy three I guess would be. Yeah, those would be my top three probably. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Hopefully, Level Forty Five years you know still around. <laughs> Hard. The, the collection's probably almost complete by now, right? Yeah, like, like, Thanks for the help, assholes. I've got them all. He's like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> giving up hope. Pete, do you have a question? I'm still looking because I've been trying to like listen to you guys while I'm looking here and reading. No, he's fucking trading cards online. Mm-hmm. I know. Zoning little kids. Do we have online. any segments? You guys doing any segments today? While you guys are quickly um Trying to find a question. I have a uh, GameStopper story. Okay. Go oh my God, this is great. Um, I I haven't been to GameStop in quite some time. I uh, haven't really had a need to recently, but uh, I did notice a big banner uh, by the GameStop near my house. Mm-hmm. And because GameStop is so good at selling games, you know, taking in the most current latest products and games and handling everything so greatly they've decided to expand themselves to now accepting iPods, iPads really? Really? They take iPads now, huh? And iPods, correct. Because they do games so well it's time to expand. (laughs) That is all, friends. Wow. I've uh, I've got a question. It's from <laughs> it's from May 15th this year from Jay Fonzi and he asks, "Do you guys ever get mad at a game and feel like throwing your remote at the TV or cussing <laughs> at the game?" Fuck you. Well, oh. <laughs> Just well, He got his shit answered. <laughs> uh well, my answer for that would be no. I would never get angry at a video game because it's not a real thing. I get angry in <laughs> situations, but not over an imaginary character. So you oh, shit, I don't. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Heather Claus has drove me insane. The, uh, maddest, I, the, the maddest I get is I hit my enter key really hard sometimes when I'm having a bad game. I'll just start pressing that thing really hard. That's about it. Uh, here's, here's a tough question, and this is from Angel. Posted on May 22nd. Hey guys, I was wondering which game remake or future sequel you would like to see receive the live orchestra treatment. I think a new Star Fox and Nintendo's next console with orchestrated music would help give it that extra epic feeling. Anyway, thanks for the great work. I don't know, what do you guys think? Like, I guess the best way to think about it is if a classic series was remade today, which series do you think would benefit from having music like Shadow of the Colossus, you know, or Dragon Quest VIII with that sort of, you know, the real live orchestra recorded? Well, Dragon Quest VIII had that. Yeah. I know I'm saying, like, as an example. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, I agree with Angel. I, th- I think without a doubt, I mean, we, we're still looking for a new Star Fox game Yeah. for the Nintendo. That console. would be amazing. And I think that would be the, that would be brilliant if they would. But yeah, absolutely. F-Zero? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know that F Zero would benefit. I think Star Fox would benefit more from a fully orchestrated yeah. soundtrack, but yeah, I mean, F Zero even would be great. Personally, a new Custer's Revenge would be perfect. <laughs> orchestrated. Exactly. <laughs> It'd be like freaking wow. softcore at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say, that, you know, the, the one RPG series that never got any orchestrated music for it was really deserted would be for the original Fantasy Star games. That would be incredible like E's got it Dragon Quest has got it Final Fantasy's got it but that's one series well that's one series that Sega doesn't give a shit about anymore but that yeah. would be amazing if they did that's just my two cents obviously I'm gonna pick fantasy stuff obviously Christ anyone else have any answer I'm still trying to think like it's I like the question uh, so much but it's hard it is yeah it's really hard <laughs> no, so no. hard you have no idea how hard it is. <laughs> well, a cat couldn't scratch this. It's so going, hard. <laughs> wow. Going back to Custer's Revenge, I guess, huh? <laughs> how about a new Tempest? Shit, that would be awesome. Because mm-hmm. they have that techno. Music, though. What's yeah. that? Well, no, no. I wouldn't want them to lose that techno soundtrack. That's true. That's a staple. That's true. 
Damn, what a fucking hard question. You're the one who answered. God, I, it, I know. I liked it so much, though. How about like, <laughs> no, no, not that. <laughs> Greg, you have one? Can you think of one? I can't. Do you need me to ask another? Do you, do you want me to come in with some more news or something? While you think? <laughs> sure. Because, <laughs> you know, I got news out the ass. I can do all oh, yeah. kinds of stuff. Okay. So uh, today, Sega posted on their blog that uh, they're doing a competition, and they want you to name that game, they're calling it. So they're, on YouTube, they uploaded a video of a sound clip from a game. It's a game that they said they're going to announce shortly. Wait, can you oh. play this sound clip for us, Jason, without people cheating? Hold on. Because I want to, tr we'll try and take a guess. Oh, we're yeah, all going to, well, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, we all already know it. Oh. Easy. Play. It's easy. It? Easy. Play it, play it. Um, play so it. they said that if you know the name uh, of the game that they're playing, send the answer to an email that they gave and whatever, and they'll give you a free drawing to win a game or whatever, something stupid. Um, but so, but I'm more excited about this game that they're going to announce. Okay, so check this out. This is what it is. Boring Samba de Amigo. Wait, they're coming up with a new Someday Amigo. That's not... You guys don't know it? Oh, I thought Someday we'd Amigo, yeah. No, 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 no. It's not that. Really? Yeah. It's Daytona USA. Oh. I heard, like, Mexican, and I'm like... Someday Daytona! Amigo. They're coming yeah. out with a new Daytona, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's, wow. oh it's, it started off by saying Daytona. No wonder why. That's that song I fucking hate. It's a, I'm it's sorry, a, it's a rolling, some, rolling Start song. I can't, I can't stand that song. Well, I didn't say I love it either. I'm just saying I know it. <laughs> so they say the name of the, the game in the song? That's all that they played right there. It says, it says Rolling Start at the beginning. Oh. It's just mm. one of their... Oh, and that, the, the song where they say Daytona in it too? I, can't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a fan. Yeah. Well, you know, 90, no, cool, 93 was a crazy, you know, crazy year. That is really cool, though, that they're but, So it. they said that they're going to announce this shortly. So I'm excited that we make a new Daytona game here. It's I hope cool. they don't miss it out like uh, what Outrun or whatever they did. They I, yeah, I mean, it's got to be for 360 and, um, you know. What was that PS3? Sega Racer that we played, that you played, that drifting was all fucked up on it? I don't know. It doesn't exist. <laughs> oh. doesn't exist. Uh, Sega Rally Revo. Sega yeah, Rally, Revo. yeah. I thought we had a good we had a good night playing that. It was, it was I guess almost worth the money we spent for the night or two we played, especially for that story with the fucking the watermelons. I mean, come on. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jason he meets this girl on Sega Rally Revo, and we've told the story before that loves <laughs> racing games. Like it was a match made in heaven. It was but hilarious, she, and we were live streaming it all too. Yeah, we were live streaming it, but her voice was coming in really low. But people can just make it out. Wait, and her Jason's voice was like, low, like no, <laughs> no. I mean, her voice was low. Mm -hmm. But then, how did you, how did you bring in the watermelons? You were like talking about fruits, and you were like, yeah, I like watermelons. <laughs> I was, yeah, I, I was pretty punny that night. <laughs> hilarious. Oh, good stuff. So, Pete, hmm. you have an answer? <laughs> I do. Okay, what is it? They need to come out with. A real console Pokemon game. <laughs> We're talking like MMO open world style. I agree. With yeah, orchestrated music. Yeah. Oh yeah. That'd be good. Good. But if they did that, that would kill their handhelds, isn't that? That's what kind of drives their handheld sales, isn't it? You know more yeah, than me. You that. know, their their handheld games are starting to get to that point now where they're they're going to have to move somewhere different. I mean. They can keep doing what they're doing and they're still going to sell tons of copies, but the handheld versions of Pokemon are starting to reach their limit currently on the Nintendo consoles. Like even the 3DS version, unless they put that thing into like a full 3D engine, which they might, I'd much rather see that done on the consoles, you know, mm -hmm. like it would not hurt their handheld sales. If anything, the handheld sales would help the sales of the console version and boost it so high. And I'm sure Nintendo and uh, be, being the, in themselves, they tie in like the handheld versions to the console version f somehow. Shit, they're doing it for Mario Kart. You know, yeah. it's like they release both for both the console and the handheld, and it doesn't affect sales at all. So it's been something people have been asking for for so long mm -hmm. is an, an actual real console version of a Pokemon game, not the ones mm -hmm. where it's just like battling and shit. That would be amazing. Yeah. Cool. I think we should wrap this up. Wrap it. Yeah. Wrap it up and. 
One thing that just came to my mind, though, oh. the Nintendo Wii U. Wouldn't that be like the best console to release a Pokemon Snap to? You hold the controller like the Fuck viewfinder, yeah. and you like you can zoom in and out on that thing, and it's like the it's like your viewfinder, the controller. Yeah, that'd be cool. And you move it around, shit. I hope they do shit gonna, like that. Be- they're gonna do it. I know. There's a lot of pros to having that type of controller yeah. for games yeah. that we don't even know yet. Yeah. Yeah. I hope yeah. I hope Nintendo does some good stuff with the Wii U. I really. I want Nintendo to be successful. I don't like to see them like the 3DS is not doing well, and I I, I hate to see that. I like to see them doing pretty good. So, yeah, it's going to be an uphill battle for them, isn't it? Do, yeah. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, especially with the. I guess you can almost call it a failure of the 3DS so far. <laughs> they Sucks. they got a lot of ground to cover, and especially with the Wii U, I think a lot of people are not convinced. Yeah, I'm really trying to keep an open mind about it. I was expecting something different i guess mm-hmm. at e3 and so i'm trying to keep an open mind but yeah i yeah i agree i think but, you know, when be... the, before the wii came out people were kind of giving nintendo shit and look at the wii and how successful that was really yeah That's exactly cool. yeah yeah so i don't know it's nintendo they'll, they'll persevere definitely they've been around for for many many years they're not new to this by all means you know that you know they've been through thick and thin and uh, i think they'll, they'll they'll do fine and we know where they live so we need to go up there <laughs> exactly so hey greg I, we appreciate you joining us man it was yeah great Thanks for having me, guys. Great hanging out. It's Gary. Remember? It's Gary, the oh, cat killer. Gary. The yeah, cat exactly. killer. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> he's killed a million cats. That's what he's best known for. If anyone needs a great uh, animal sitter, we know one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, if you want your cat accidentally killed or murdered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who doesn't? Got the guy. Who, does. who doesn't want their cat accidentally killed? I agree with you fully. I'll invite you over if I get a cat. Be dead in the. <laughs> Well, good times, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks for hanging. Yeah, totally. See you guys. Let's talk to you soon. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.